Hey gang, back with another video for you today. I've got Dahlia here, special guest here. And since we are both patch hoes, we are reviewing a patch ho staple fragrance today. It's from the house of Quinto Canto and it's Mea Culpa. Today, a full review. She's got her box and I've got my bottle. Her bottle is inside the box, most likely. Or maybe outside. <laughs> Either way. We're going to do full unwrap. Like, I've got it all set up so that they can see, like, how magically it's presented. Oh, good. Good. Thank you. But you've been wearing it, right? Yeah. Yeah. No, this is really just, this is for the people so that everybody can experience the lovely presentation. Oh, good. Cool. So if you want to find out about Mea Culpa, a patch host staple, as I said, it's a patchouli bomb with vanilla and resins, then please stay tuned. Thanks so much for tuning in. This is Sebastian with Smelling Great Fragrance Reviews. That's right, today we're talking about Mea Culpa. It's from Quinto Canto, uh, a second house or brand from the Tiziana Terenzi uh, folks, uh, Paolo Terenzi and Tiziana. Paolo does all the fragrances for uh, Quinto Canto. So recently I did a video uh, of three fragrances from this house, which included Mea Culpa, and then there's also Ensis. And there's Mirab Mirabile here. Ensis was green. Mirabile is all about vanilla. And uh, Mea Culpa is all about patchouli. I haven't closed that giveaway yet. There is a full bottle giveaway, USA giveaway, in that video of one of the three fragrances I'm talking about, which includes Mea Culpa, sponsored by the USA distributor of Quinto Canto. So if you haven't caught that and participated, please go do that, because I will close the giveaway very soon. But either way, if this is your first time tuning into the channel and you still haven't subscribed, please do click the subscribe button below and also click the bell so that you'll be notified for future videos and giveaways. So Dahlia, what do you think about Mea Culpa? Oh my God. Um, it's a beautiful, boozy, beast mode patchouli. Um, if you were just gonna like sum it up in one. Um, but I think, um, we should probably talk about the uh, presentation since I won't be able to spray it until I unwrap it. So okay. let me just, I'm sorry about the light. I don't know how to make it not reflect, but you have this lovely, flighty, beautiful um, thingy job there. That's a technical term. <laughs> but then you've got this box, right? And it opens like a little armoire. So cute. So cute. I can't even handle it. I just did this for like a while. Like I didn't want to take it out. I think this is so darling. And um, it doesn't, there's like this cord thing that you have to cut. Like if there was a way for me to open this without cutting it, I didn't figure it out in time. And um, I just wanted you all to experience the box situation here because when we requested this to be sent I didn't know that the box was this amazing and I would like to say that it's all about the juice I don't care I mean it's, that's <laughs> a lie I completely care I love a good presentation well you and know what that's a, that's a thing with the Terenzis they they are presentation people their presentations out of this world they and and so it's like on this little platform see with like a little silky bed for it to sit in. Um, a little coffin. Oh, no, don't do that. <laughs> um, but there's like a booklet. And um, mea culpa means it's my fault, right? Or like I'm at fault, something like that. Um, but then when you open the box. Um, yeah, OK, so I don't know if this is Latin or um, a derivative language like Italian from Latin, but it says uh, something that means with love, anything is possible. So what is the I relationship, always... do you think, Seb, between the statement with love, anything is possible, and the name of the fragrance, which is Mea Culpa? I don't really know, but I always think of that song. Well, it's actually, yeah, a song from Enigma back in the very early 90s, the kind of orthodox uh, chanting uh, priests music with the uh, beats. That's what I think of. But uh, speaking of presentation about the Terenzis, yep. look at this. Look at that. They so, definitely know I what presentation watched, is. I watched your video where you had one of them like in salt water. Um, yes. 
that was <laughs> that was like next level. Yeah, yeah. Well, let's tell them a little bit details about the fragrance first. So Mia Culpa by Quinto Canto was launched in 2015. 100 ml bottle is $195. Uh, the distributor is the, the fragrance group and uh, the, the retailer is soavantgarde.com. I have a link in the info box. If you're curious to go check it out, you can buy bottles and samples there. This is considered an oriental woody fragrance or now we should call it an amber woody fragrance. And the concentration is extrait de parfum. Notes includes incense, red sand, chest of memories for top notes, middle notes or heart notes features patchouli, cedar, wood, birch, slate. Base notes features musk, vanilla, benzoin, resinoids. So those are all the notes listed for this particular fragrance. Do we experience them all? Well, let's find out. But before we spray um, the fragrance, can we talk about the velvety magic? On the, oh, on the coating it's of the so bottle. Soft. <laughs> very tactile, like it, it's beautiful. It really suits the warmness and like coziness of patchouli to have a velvety, felty, whatever this is. Um, it's nice. Great presentation. It, it's really nice. I do, I do really like when not, it doesn't always have to be glam, it doesn't always have to be just like glamour but every <laughs> once in a while i do really enjoy it it's and it's presentation's kind of great cap, and like the cap is heavy and everything it's not like too heavy but it's a nice it's it's nice okay sorry so the, the only um, thing the only thing i don't like about the bottles is it, if you're in a hurry and you accidentally rather than grabbing it you touched it it, it does tip over a little fast but other than that i think their presentation's phenomenal the only but, complaint i have is that this kind of reflective thing shows every single fingerprint and makes me feel like a grubby disgusting sort of human who doesn't like wash frequently enough because every time i like go near it i just see like my own fingerprints which it's not cute so other than that though it's really nice it's nice yeah okay so the only thing i want to say is I don't know what the chest of memories would smell like, but this is listed uh, on the soavantgarde.com website, who is the distributor of uh, Quinto Canto. So what do you think chest of memories smells like to you? I think that is like an old bookstore or a curio cabinet, or I just went to um, the auction house by here like but with 17 different masks on so I couldn't smell anything but like <laughs> a chest of memories smells I would guess like old things like paper that has kind of moldered a little bit and like um dust maybe there's a little know. spillage on it handprints and things like that Random stains yeah like okay Got fabric it. Yeah. that's disintegrating a little bit I don't I don't want to take away from anybody's like romantic experience of memory and scent memory, but like a chest of memories would, I'm guessing, smell like a junk shop. And I love that. That's a positive. I am not in any way suggesting this smells not lovely because it smells amazing. But I did, I did kind of smirk. It is a, a very kind of creative and whimsical um way of putting it yeah but i think for me what's the standout note it's it's patchouli right this is what we experience the most right yeah it's um but but like in that um we've talked about this and not that we've ever talked about patchouli before but um we've never some, i don't even know what patchouli apple. is <laughs> right i mean like it's what a plant um in the in the space of the boozy patchouli there's, um, we've talked about barrels. I think I've probably already shared my fun fact, which is that a cooper is a person who makes barrels. That's, that's what that means. Okay. The more you know. And a, this particular patchouli flavor is a very boozy kind of soaked in a barrel that had alcohol, kind of a woody booziness which is lovely. We, I think in previous videos, we've talked about how there's also 
like the more gourmand, like chocolatey patchouli. And then there's also a third sort of earthier, um, slightly medicinal sometimes patchouli, um, like that smells more like soil and a little colder, like a tincture. But this is, this is the booby. This is the booby barrel Cooper influenced. Version. It's interesting. I don't agree about the boozy part with this one. Oh, what? No. Are we going to fight? Um, this is more vanillic. It's more vanillic patchouli for me. It's almost like, to me, Mirabile, which is all about vanilla, is taking Mirabile and adding it, patchouli to it and, and, and you know, accomplishing uh, you know, a patchouli fragrance that's very vanillic. But that doesn't mean... It doesn't mean it, it. There's no booziness in there. I mean, your your nose picks up things differently. But do you know what vanilla is? Vanilla is a syrupy, sweet, delicious ingredient. Well, okay, it's a pod from an orchid. But yeah. aside from that, you make like vanilla that you use in baking with alcohol. Correct. So I feel like I feel like we're we're still in the same sort of zone of agreement. I, I, we're not fighting. That's good. So I get a more of a resinous touch here, more balsamic experience. Yeah. But you know, it might have light undertones of booziness there. I'm not getting chocolate. I'm getting more vanillic resins with light hints of booze, but it's not as boozy as I, th I think you made it out to be for me. It's of, okay. If we were going to do a comparison between this and like maybe Patch Flash or this and Psychedelic. Um, Patch Flash being from Tower Bell, Psychedelic being from Javoy. It might not be as boozy as those. But if I was going to put this against Reminiscence Patchouli, it would not be as chocolatey vanilla as that. I feel like there's a spectrum of patchouli. Can I have that t-shirt? Can you, can the Perfume Tees brand make me a Spectrum of Patchouli t-shirt? Because I would wear the heck out of that. Although, let's pause a moment and appreciate the- Ooh. Uh, hey, Patch Ho. I think it's okay, well, let, me, first, let me hold mine up too. Wait, you have purple? Yours is purple? I think it's the lighting of the, um, I didn't want you guys to have Phantom of the Opera face this time. So I have like, you saw my setup. It's janky, but I think the lighting is making it purple. It's it's sort of like a pinky, purpley color in real life. Great shirt yeah. though, and you can buy it on somewhere. <laughs> somewhere, yeah, somewhere on my. I'll have a link to it in the info box. But um, uh, yeah, the, there's a link to it, but. Going back to this, um, you get boozy vanilla or you're getting more booze than vanilla? I'm specifically getting booze-soaked barrel. So like oaky, maybe it's the chest of memories that had alcohol in it. Um, I'm not- So somebody spilled a, a, like a bottle of whiskey or something? Soaked, like- like yeah, it's the spilled and then it's soaked. Um, if you want, I, I'm I'm stuck on the whole fun facts about Coopers. Um, it 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 has a sort of um, not a cabinet where alcohol was stored, but specifically, um, like like so drenched that you can't differentiate the alcohol from the wood very very together mm -hmm. i do I, there is a there is a there's a hint of vanilla i'll give you a, there's there is a little i can't i can't say you're completely wrong there's there is vanilla there but it's more of that um lovely sort of alcoholic patchouli mm. Interesting. For me, it is definitely vanillic, but resinous vanillic. I think that benzoin is pretty prominent here. 
There's a resinous balsamic touch in here, but it's ven vanillic. Benzoin is very vanillic. So I feel like vanilla and benzoin together can create accords for us to smell maybe uh, something a little different. But I feel like the patchouli is over the top earthy, which is what I like. And then in contrast with those sweeter notes, the resinous benzoin and um, the vanilla, there might be light hints of chocolate under there. There might be light hints of booze, but I'm experiencing a vanillic combination of vanilla with um, patchouli, which is it's pretty amazing. Like you, if you look for the gourmand patchouli, it's there. If you look for the earthy patchouli, it's there. If you look for the boozy patchouli, it's there. I should say you're not looking with your eyes, you're smelling with your nose. So if you, if you, if you focus on those, um, so maybe it's just a very comprehensive patchouli um, in that it um, kind of hits a lot of the things that I love about patchouli in one fragrance. Um, so how do you think Mea Culpa by Quinto Canto compares to Lena Reed's Patchouli Antique, Reminiscence Patchouli, Javoy Psychedelic. They're kind of in that same ballpark. I think they're ambery, of course, it's an ambery base, but vanilla resins. You said that the Javoy is boozy for you. I get more chocolate from that one. It could be something like a chocolate booze, perhaps. I have not had a chocolate martini since before lockdown. Hmm. I haven't had it for a long time. That's a really sad thing to realize, but let's make sure that that's on our agenda. Because <laughs> that would be delightful. Um, I think in terms of how it compares, there's a family of patchouli that it's sort of just like, take my money. Like this. If this, I smell it, I'm going to get it. It will, or I'm going to like not get it and then obsess about it until I get it. I'd put the Lori Rodkin Gothic too in that same like boat. Like if we're building the arc of like big beastly, boozy, kind of dramatic rock and roll patchouli, um, all those ones you said, Reminiscence, uh, Lainery, um, Lori Rodkin, Javoy, um, there's probably I, one more somewhere I'm missing, forgetting. I think the Towerville one in there too. The um, the Patch Flash one has a very very boozy kind of like. Swirling. Discontinued. Ugh. But the, that one is a is a beautiful now, one. Now that one is ultra boozy because he actually features that whiskey note in in that one, so it is really boozy. I I'd say all of them like kind of yeah like i love them all i wear them all i they're not the same i can make that case of but this one like the lori rodkin one is very vanillic i would say that one um but there is sort of like a, a balsamic there i don't know what it is but there's a specific sort of vanilla and woods combination for me that it's 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 very it's my personal definition of balsamic. Um, and that's not the predominant thing for me here. It is kind of cold feeling. Oh, that was the other one. The, um, what's that silvery bottle from the Italian brand? I forget that name. But that one would also be on that like arc of boozy patchouli, chocolatey gourmand. That one is kind of in that cold metallic kind of. But this is a little colder too. Um, oh, wow. I get a lot of warmth with this one. Really? Maybe it's because mm -hmm. I'm like really cold right now. It is cold in here too. But that vanilla and benzoin is ultra warm. It's a warm fragrance, warm, spicy. Now, I guess what I was leading up to is if somebody has, let's say, patchouli from uh, Reminiscence, if they have Javoy Psychedelic, if they have uh, Lenaride's Patchouli Antique, why would they also want to get Mea Culpa by Quinto Canto. We do see differences, correct? Yes. Oh, I see what you're saying. So some people um, will not see a difference. They're all going to smell the same. 
So why would one person get this one if they already have the others? Because you're, you have a sickness and you are... Because you're a pacho. <laughs> you're a pacho. Like if, if you have all of those, probably you don't need this, but let's talk about the word need and how it's a difficult word. You don't probably need more than one of any of those need. You don't need, the, I mean, but- you Unless need, you're addicted. Well, right. I mean, that's kind of, let's, let's just be clear that there's an awareness of what need means. I think um, the way this one is different for me, which is different from your skin, our skin always wears differently. Uh, there's kind of a coldness to it, an austerity. Um, reminiscence patchouli is like a hug. It's cozy. You want to just kind of snuggle up with it. Um, patch flash is like you're in a wood paneled kind of like library with like a lot of books and like a brandy snifter and it's all very sort of leather and masculine and sort of that's the feel of it. Um, the Lena Reed one to me is very like swagger and rock and roll as is the Lori Rodkin, but the Lori Rodkin one has a lot more vanilla. They're different because, but at the end of the day, they're all very big patchouli. This one though has um, other kind of like the chest of memories that we were uh, ripping on earlier has, um, there is sort of an, um, not dusty in a bad way, dusty in a good way. There's, there's an, um, a long, long time ago-ness, not retro, not old person, none of that stuff, but there's like- Antique? A, kind of. Um, there's something about this that's like old books and like, Taxidermy. Like an old library? Yeah, but like not taxidermy in a gross way. Like just sort of like a... Like, like a that store in Paris, De, De Royale or whatever it's called, where they have all those beautiful taxidermy Or like the one on animals. Russia that has all the amazing taxidermy. Oh yeah, that store too. Yeah, right? I, 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 I'm sure that's not politically correct to think it's cool, but it is an art form and I do think it's cool. Um, this one is different because it has, um, for me, a cold kind of almost slightly camphorous quality, um, as well as like an old bookstore quality. The patchouli is there, it's big, it's boozy. Um, but this is like a writer's patchouli. This is like, um, maybe you have a bottle of something dark and brown in the bottom desk drawer that you, you know, while you're typing on your like typewriter that makes that amazing old time sound effect, like with the ding. Um, it's, it's like a, it, it's a mood. Um, it's kind of like tweed and like one of those, like, what are those vest things that go with the suit? I guess they're just vests, but like, uh, <laughs> you know, it's, it's wool and like, um, I, I, it's, I really like it. I know I'm making it sound very masculine, but it's not particular. I mean, patchouli to me is a masculine note to begin with. It's very earthy woody. Yeah. And the way this one starts is very cold. You're right about the austere thing. Uh -huh. But for me, it ends up very warm. It's almost like a cold start and it's a warm ending, which is, the kind of fragrances I like, warm and spicy. This is what, what we end up with. The incense, for me, incense as a note is a cold note. Sand, there's sand here. So there's kind of a granular quality to it. I mean, what is really sand in a fragrance? You experience it more than you smell it, I think. So that's what I'm experiencing. But once you get past those two notes, it immediately starts getting warmer and more warmer but it does start very cold. Mm -hmm. I agree. I agree that it starts out cold. I've been wearing it for however many minutes we've been talking and it's 
maybe warmer now, but it's still got that slightly camperous kind of coldness for me. Um, I'm not at the warm part yet, uh, but in that sort of narrative that I just painted, there's probably, there is a lot of wood, you know, maybe there's a wooden desk and wooden bookshelves and, um, um, maybe we should make a table out of a desk out of patchouli. <laughs> does it grow? I think it's like a bush. Does it, is it like, no, it's, it's part of the mint family, by the way. Oh, I, I, I think I like that. Um, yeah, oh, man, let's go to like the auction house and get inexpensive furniture and refinish it and make a business. Like, that'd be cool. Patchouli desks. <laughs> Um, oh, this is really good though. This is, I would put this up there with the Reminiscence, with the Lenarides, with the Jotboy, and a few others as very similar kind of patchoulis that all kind of remind you of one another, but then they go in different directions because obviously they're created by different people or perfumers and things like that. And you, you say you get boozy, I say I get more vanilla resins. We experience fragrances differently. No, I don't, I don't. I'm not saying that I'm not getting boozy. I'm, not, I'm just not getting it as much as you. And I love yeah. boozy to begin with. Um, to address the masculine thing, I don't... Um, Should we address the masculine elephant in the room? <laughs> I, it's, I, I can wear this comfortably without feeling like I'm wearing a man friend's fragrance. So um, I would say this is quite unisex. It's not... You brought up masculine though. Do you think it's masculine? You said it was masculine when I was like going down that like daydream of typewriter. You totally did. You'll play back the tape and you'll hear it. Well, if I did say masculine, I don't think it's masculine. Although I think patchouli as a note is masculine. Yeah, maybe that's what you said. Um, yeah. This is, um, it's, it's a big, strong patchouli. Um, you don't, uh, yeah, you, it, it's different from all the other ones we've listed that are big, strong patchouli, but it is, um, it is a big, strong patchouli, and the dominant note is patchouli. The cool thing about Quinto Canto is, in comparison to the other fragrances, a few of the other fragrances are eau de toilette, maybe a few of them are eau de parfum, but Quinto Canto fragrances are ex de parfum, which means a higher concentration of perfume oils, which means they will last longer. Typically, I've noticed that when brands make ex de parfum, they don't have as much of a projection either. But fragrances that are created by Paolo Terenzi are, are, are so big. They have the massive cloud and the biggest sillage. So those are the times I speak about performance and things like that is because most fragrances to, are to me very similar. I'm not gonna say this one is not performing this way or that, but this, these fragrances from Tiziano Terenzi and Quinto Canto are beast mode, I think. Would you agree? Absolutely. I have my hand probably three feet away right now. I still am in the cloud of this fragrance. When I like put my hand closer to my face to like you know, look for the notes that are not patchouli because really all I care about is patchouli, but let's just, let's just be upfront about that. I only care about patchouli. I'll also buy that t-shirt, but um, it's, I can almost like feel it on my tongue. If, if, I don't know if that makes sense, but it's like, it's so um, concentrated. There's almost That's the word. a feeling of patchouli like on the back half of my tongue. It must be good. From smelling it. I, this is not me complaining. I'm completely fine with that. <laughs> so we both agree this is a great one. I really like it. I'm really happy to have it. I think it's um, a beautiful presentation in case I didn't drive that point home enough. Um, and, you know, I don't know what it's my fault or mea culpa or I'm, you know, it was me. Um, I, don't, I don't know. It's a lovely name though. And it's a lovely presentation. Great. I love it. It's really, really great. And I'll say it once again, 
I think it almost seems like it's an evolution or of uh, Mirabile. I feel like the vanilla in Mea Culpa is similar to the vanilla in uh, Mirabile. That's what I'm experiencing, but only when it gets warmer as it's drying down. Because as we said, when you first spray it, it is a pretty cold start or a cool start. But really, really, it's a wonderful, wonderful patchouli fragrance. If you're looking for your next best patchouli, definitely try Mea Culpa. I, I, I think do, it's great. I do still, now I feel bad that we've named these other patchoulis. Um, it is different. It is, um, with reminiscence, it's hard to think of anything other than patchouli. It's this cozy, warm patchouli. This one, the coldness is still there for me. There's a bookish, woody kind of set of notes as well. Um, that, I mean, the patchouli is the dominant note, but the, um, the, the wood and resin notes are not far behind it. It's kind of mixing in there. You know, I didn't hear you mention anything smoky. Do you get smokiness? It's very light, if any. I, in the, in the, I'm going to, I'm going to be tricksy here. I think it's in a barrel made by a cooper that would have booze in it. I believe they burn the inside of the barrel and that contributes to the, um, Okay. Yeah, I'm, I'm gonna go there. And so there's, there is kind of like a wood tannin, boozy, smoky quality. Um, okay. That, that I'll, I'll give you that. I'll, I'll go there. I'm, I'm just gonna hang out here with commentary about <laughs> barrels and booze thematically. All right, all right. Makes total um, sense. It, it's, it's good. It's very, it's very much a mood. It's, it's very like, um, timeless and very I feel very literary for maybe that's just the headspace I'm in but there's something sort of very like um bohemian oh yeah I could go with bohemian um but I could also go with like for some reason it just popped into my head like a ship's captain like one of those like the little room under the cabin you know where there's like the tiny round window um, like a boat that has rooms, not like a small boat that has a room, like a big mm -hmm. boat that has a lot of rooms. Like the ship's um, captain would be in that one, and there would be mm. the, the the books and the typewriter and the ship's log. I I could also see this fitting really well into that narrative. Okay, makes total sense. Does it? So we approve. We approve of Mea Culpa by Quinto Canto. Guys, let us know if you've worn Quinto Canto by, no, let us know if you've worn Mea Culpa by Quinto Canto. Let us know also uh, if you've tried any of their other fragrances. And don't forget, I'm closing the giveaway very soon for one bottle of choice of either uh, Mea Culpa, there's Ensis, a very green fragrance, and then there's also Mirabile, which is the vanilla I'm uh, experiencing in Mea Culpa. Um, Thanks so much for tuning in today. If you have any questions or comments for us, please list in the comment section below. Uh, don't forget to follow Dahlia at uh, Perfumed Dahlia. Other than that, please like this video, please share it, follow me on Facebook, Twitter, and Instagram, and we'll be back with more videos very soon. Have a good one, goodbye. <laughs>